Tosin, it's great to have you Thank as you. always in the studio. And of course, this is the first time we're having you as Mansart. We know that you used to yes. be GT Assurance. So tell us about the transition. How, has, how have your stakeholders taken the change of name? Uh, thanks, Wally. I think because it's of course we know. I mean, sorry, cutting, but GT was a very strong brand, and yes. there's a sense that there could have been some erosion if you were to switch so clearly as you have to another name. Thanks, Wally. I think it's actually gone a lot better than we hoped for. Uh, first of all, you need to understand the fact that our institutional customers um, have a different set of um, uh, possibly, you know, I could say criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very much interested in who the new owners were. Right. Uh, and we had informed them about the new owners since last year, mm -hmm. very top names, uh, DFIs and a couple of very top um, private equity firms. So they were very happy with that. They also wanted to know whether the management team was going to be essentially the same. And again, you know, we affirmed this. They wanted to, you know, affirm our financial security, our risk rating and things like that. And so far as all of those, you know, were in place, uh, the truth is that most of the institutional customers didn't really care what name. You what know, name you called it? What, really what, didn't what, what name you called it? It didn't really matter. The the trick was always going to be with the retail customers, right. and indeed, a lot of them have asked questions: why they change the name? You know, what does the name mean? And it has been a lot of curiosity, you know, as to you know why we have changed the name and why we have changed the name to Mansard. All of these questions, I think, we have answered, and uh, I I believe that uh, the the initial figures we are seeing indicate that we are not losing any market share at all. Well, clearly, these figures fact, look. We are green market share. It looked quite impressive, especially if you look at the top line, up about 26%. That's for net premiums now to yes. 2.3 billion. So tell, tell us the story. How have you been able to drive that growth from um, the, for, so far this year in what many are calling quite difficult business environment? Well, you know, well, we, we have been a fast growth, a high growth company over the years, and we have continued to implement a lot of strategies, you know, that we came up with years ago. Um, this year, we've seen you know substantial growth in our marine in our marine business as well as in our oil and gas business. Marine grew by about seventy four percent. Oil and gas grew by about forty seven percent. That's in this year. This year, in the wow. first half of this year, both. Right. So clearly, your foray into the oil and gas space is, is oh, working. Oh, clearly, clearly. Today, we are one of the top three in underwriters in the oil and gas industry. We've also seen substantial growth in the in the retail space. Our motor insurance grew by about thirty three percent. And that's due, you know, to strong growth in the retail retail business. We're expanding our retail distribution, you know, points. Uh, aside from bank assurance, this year alone we have opened about seven um, retail uh, sales offices. Right. Uh, we, we call them the Mansard Welcome Centers. Okay, those uh, are that's owned by Mansard, of course. Yes, yes, they are completely. But owned for by bank us. assurance, you you share with the banks. Obviously. Bank assurance, we have relationships with uh, a number of banks, okay. and and this continues, you know, to grow. Okay, well, definitely very solid performance on the top line. But I think there is some pressure there with respect to claims. We're seeing claims of about 66%. And I was speaking to an analyst earlier today, and he says that's really a reflection of the market environment. I don't know if you would agree. Well, it, it, indeed, he, I, I think he's right, uh, especially in the non-life side of the business. Right. Because that figure uh, that you're seeing on the face of our P&L uh, is really the non-life figure. Hmm. You would have to go into the notes to see the life figure. Okay. The truth is that if you add the life figure for last year and the life figure for this year, we have only grown claims by 10%. Okay. And that's because we have seen a, a bit of a dip, you know, with the life claims, hmm. uh, whilst the non-life claims, you know, a, area has grown. Uh, but what's, what's responsible for that? What do you think is um, the well, factor here? Well, well, with us, we've had a, a number of um, um, high-profile, you know, fire incidences okay. in factories of some top, you know, clients. We've had some liability. Um, claims also coming up from a couple of financial services institutions. Mm. Those are really the driving areas uh, where the institutional customers are concerned. Now, with the retail, there is growing awareness on the usage of insurance by the retail clients. So, as we're growing motor policy and we are growing the motor, you know, portfolio, uh, we are also seeing a lot of customers, you know, who ordinarily would have had accidents, they would have fought each other on the road, and they would have gone. <laughs> They are learning I've to. Seen that happen. They are learning to exchange, right. you know, motor insurance policies, you know, and you know, come forward to claim, especially now that they know that Mansard, you know, is an organisation, you know, that um, honours its uh, claim obligations. So we're seeing a bit of that as well. So it's a bit of a mixture. What about your investments? I think that's a very interesting point. A ninety-five percent growth in investment income. And this is, well, of course, we know that the stock market has recovered a little bit. I know the last time we spoke, you were not too aggressive about equity. So is this a bond story? What exactly is happening here? Uh, well, this is a bond and money market story. 
Mm. Uh, you recall that towards the end of last year, uh, Treasury bills were doing yields of between 18 and 20 percent. Right. And I did tell you that from uh, the beginning of last year, we had started shifting you know, the allocation of our assets away from illiquid assets into more liquid assets uh, that were yielding very definite you know, returns. Uh, and so we're moving away from quoted equity you know, mm -hmm. into money market, into, into fixed income okay. securities. And what, we, what you're seeing today is as a result of all of that. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we can't take it much further. But last point for me, your thoughts on this on the sector? We know that right now, if you look at the stock market, only a few names, in fact, maybe two or three names are really actively traded in the insurance space. It seems investors have totally forgotten about the, insur the insurance space as a whole. Is that really a reflection of the segmentation of the market or are there any other factors at play in your view? Well, I think, first of all, there is an overall, you know, general, you know, uh, apathy towards uh, sectors that have not done very well in terms of returns. But even if you look at our sector, I think what the investors have done is to, is to select those that have, you know, uh, um, quality, high, that are of high quality. And obviously, Mansard, you know, would, be, would stand out even in that category, along with one or two other companies as well. Well, let's leave it there. Um, Tosin, it's great to have you, and best wishes uh, with the new name. Thank you very much. Uh, Tosin Rushawa is the C Chief Client Officer at Mansard, giving us his, a perspective on the results just released.